Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights, part of the Kings of Horror Network. This is M.L. Miller. I took a look at the movie Relic this week, and it was directed by Natalie Erica James, written by Natalie Erica James and Christian White, and it stars Emily Mortimer, Robin Nevin, and Bella Heathcote. Relic is going to be out in drive-ins, digital download, and on demand from IFC Midnight. Much has been said about elevated horror. Most of the time that means the themes are dire and wallowing in sadness. Most of the times you walk away with those films feeling depressed, and not with the thrill that one has while walking away from maybe a Blumhouse jump scarer. But while Avi Arad, Robert Eggers, and the pairing of Severin Fiala and Veronica Franz think that in order to feel something, the audience must endure that feeling for an extremely long amount of time, Relic director Natalie Erica James is able to achieve the same levels of emotional intensity in a tight hour and a half, never lingering fetishistically on scenes to blatantly drive the point home. I like to label films like Hereditary, The Lodge, The Lighthouse, and Midsummer as sorrow porn, where it's almost as if the director is gleefully putting the actors and the viewer through the same type of sadism that those who made the torture porn trend so mainstream in the aughts. And while Relic deals with very similar subject matter and is emotionally heavy in its own right, it never lingers or wallows or makes these tragic wounds fester like those other films do. Relic is a tight, suspenseful film about tragedy and loss, framed with quite a few effective horror trappings. And personally, I think Relic is a much more accomplished film than the rest of those because it is told in a much more direct and a much more focused way. Emily Mortimer plays Kay, a single mother who lives a busy lifestyle, a lifestyle so busy that weeks go by and she has not had contact with her mother, Edna, played by Robin Nevin. When the neighbor calls Kay and says he hasn't seen or heard from Edna in about a week, she gathers up her adult daughter, Sam, Bella Heathcote, and heads out to her mother's home in the country. When she arrives, Kay finds little post-it notes reminding Edna to do day-to-day -day things scattered about, and the home left as if Edna had simply vanished. After a few days of looking for Edna in the forest, Kay finds her standing in the kitchen and acting as if nothing has happened. Though Kay and Sam inquire, Edna will not say anything about where she was, where her mysterious bruises are from, and what is going on. Fearful that her mother may not be able to take care of herself anymore, Kay begins looking into nursing homes, while Sam thinks it might be better if she moves in with Edna to help her. Meanwhile, signs are pointing to there being something very wrong with the house they're all living in, with mysterious shadow forms moving about and odd movements sounding just beyond the walls. But is all of this something paranormal, or just a part of Edna's mind giving way to dementia? Relic deals with subject matter that has been well dissected in recent horror films, from Hereditary to The Taking of Deborah Logan, focusing on a loved one who is literally degenerating mentally and physically before our eyes. The subject of old age is one that often hits me hard as I witnessed relatives deteriorate rather quickly quite a few times in the past, and have an aged mother living on her own who one day may not be able to do so. I have a feeling director and co-writer Natalie Erica James may have witnessed tragic events such as this as well. This is a film that overflows with heartache and regret, grief and tragedy, and does so in a morbidly beautiful and tragically poetic way that only one who has endured such sorrow would understand. Awards aren't given to films like this, but all three of the leading ladies of Relic are excellent and very deserving in some type of recognition. James's characters are lived in, complex, faulted, and very, very human. Nevin's Edna gives a physically and emotionally demanding performance that challenges both Kay and Sam. Mortimer's Kay is a divorcee, struggling with work, and seems like she cannot take the burden of her mother's care at this time in her life. Heathcote's Sam is aimless, working in a bar, and clueless as to where her life will take her. When these two characters are met with the challenge of deciding what is best to do with Edna in the state that she's in, they have vastly different reactions. But as tensions begin to shift and morph concerning Edna's condition, Kay and Sam's positions shift as well in a very real and understanding way. This makes the film, despite the paranormal ongoings, very believable to watch unfold. 
and the believability makes it all the easier to suck in the viewer and hold their attention and investment in a chokehold. So when the real shit goes down later on in the movie, you're stuck and you're in this movie watching things deteriorate. While Relic is very much a story about very real tragedy, it beautifully incorporates strong elements of horror from the very beginning. The house Edna lives in is very much alive. It shifts, it changes its structure to match the, whose story is going on. There are moments where Sam and Kay are wandering around the house and the twists and turns seem endless. I was wondering how big this house is because it seemed like everybody's wandering around in the house but no one's running into each other. And that's part of the mystery. As Edna's mind decays, Kay and Sam experience all of the horror, discomfort, and disorientation one might feel during dementia through their witness to shadow figures, odd noises, and maze-like corridors that are uncovered as they explore the home. Just as Edna is experiencing dementia, through Kay and Sam, we experience a form of dementia ourselves. All of this plays out in a beautiful and morbid and twisted climax that must be seen to be believed as metaphor becomes reality and the truth is understood by our entire cast. This ending was so beautifully made, it gave me chills, it brought tears to my eyes. It's a very emotionally solid ending, but it's also extremely grotesque and morbid. It's one thing to throw out emotions and recklessly heap them on top of one another in an almost joyous fashion and wear a viewer down for an extended amount of time. It's another thing entirely to make a complex story about emotion, yet also make it interesting, to the point, and powerful in a much more truncated amount of time. One simply wears you down, while the other, Relic, entertains and takes you on a journey dealing with the same kinds of themes and emotions without making you want to check into a clinic afterwards. Relic is a masterfully realized story filled with rich themes and intense emotions. There is an effective amount of horror, including a very grueling effect scene towards the end that will make even the hardest horror fans skin crawl. It's a film that puts the viewer through a metaphorical obstacle course of emotions, horrific realizations, and heavy consequence in order to have the viewer experience what one of the characters is going through. I keep going back to that final scene in Relic. It's horrifying, and it fills and deflates the heart all at once. Simply magnificent. This is Natalie Erica James's first feature, and it's proof that I will look out for anything this filmmaker has to offer from here on out. Relic is not popcorn horror. It's deeply disturbing and soulfully resonant from beginning to end, and I guarantee this is a film you won't be able to shake after viewing. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what you saw, pound that like button below. Please share this with your pals across social media. If you're looking for written reviews, go over to mlmillerwrites.com, and I have a, quite a few backlogged there. And hit the subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications so you never miss a video. Thank you once again for listening to M.L. Miller Frights, and I'll see you next time. Yo